let's continue with the lessons. What are we going to learn today? Stamps. Stamps. Is it vegetative or reproductive still? Vegetative. Vegetative. All right. So the note that you have now, that is Dr. Fidel's note, okay? I have not made any changes. Last week, I did a lot of changes, not changes. I just add a few things. Yeah, yeah. All right. Because uh, this is already your week number five. So we should be having SEL actually, and the component. So all this while, everything coming from the lecturer. Actually, something needs to come from you as well. All right, okay. We'll have that activity in your group. Hopefully, you still remember who are your group members. Do you still remember you have groups? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, we'll, <coughs> we'll make a move. There. Can we? All right. Okay. All right. So this note is from Dr. Fidel's, okay? And he's the coordinator for, um, for this course. <clears throat> okay, so now we are dealing with um, stem morphology. We have a uh, look at the root morphology. I hope you still remember your root morph um, lessons. Okay, what's the meaning of nappy form? Nappy, what does it mean? An API. Bentuk apa? What form is it? Tak sampai sebulan. What is it? Nappy form, you have your root modification, right? Tap root modification, adventitious root modification. Nappy. From the word napus. Pengat. Yeah, what shape is it? Tuber. It simply means swelling. What about the nappy form? You have nappy form, isn't it? From the word napus. Untuk apa? Top. Uh, yes, top. Which is gasing. Anybody tak tahu gasing apa? Tak pernah main? Okay, good. Right. So, um, we're going to continue now with the stem morphology. I'm going to go through very quickly because um, you're going to do some activity with this. Uh, hopefully, don't worry, nothing, nothing to submit today. Okay. So we're going to have a look at the uh, the morphology of the stem, meaning that whenever we say about morphology, pretty much anything, everything outside of it. If you go into it, the internal structure with that we call anatomy, right? And then the type of branching and stem modification, right? So and this is a typical plant. When the plant looks like this, is it monocot or dicot? Monocotyledon or dicotyledon? Monocot or dicot? Dicot. Why dicot? Because the venation of the... Yes. Look at the venation. It looks um, reticulated. Plus, the bud here, the meristem is actually exposed like this. If it, this was grass, you cannot see the meristem. It's concealed at the bottom. Okay, if this was grass, grass like this, right? You only got one. Then you got your leaf here, like your uh, corn, rice. The meristem of the rice is right at the bottom here. Okay, so this is the apical meristem for rice. Then it will grow inside. Bef um, gets bigger until you get your um, leaf on the outside. <clears throat> you will never find the bud of rice suddenly in between leaf on the outside. Like this, no. Okay, so when you zooming in and look under microscope, this is the typical appearance of a stem. Um, 
or to be specific, Mary Stem. Don't don't get confused, okay? Just because the word stem is here doesn't mean that this only happened in the stem. This is actually a type of undifferentiated cell. Undifferentiated cells. Cells yang belum membahagi. Cells that do not have destiny yet. Yeah, okay? Just cells. No identity. So, with the progression of time, these cells will differentiate, differentiate, or in Malay we call membeza, to become specialized cell. Specialized cells. So, it can be leaf cells, it can be flower cells, it can be new stem cells, and so on. Right? The same things happen with your blood cells. Your blood cells originate from where? Do you have blood? Yes. Okay. Your blood originally from where? Your eye? Your hand? Your tummy? You're not. It's from your bone marrow. Okay? Your backbone? Yes. Tulang sum sum. Bone marrow. Bone, marrow. Okay, to long some some. <clears throat> so your bone marrow contains meristem as well, like this, undifferentiated. With the progression of times, and so on, the undifferentiated cells of the bone marrow will give rise to various types of blood cells. You have red blood cells. You have white blood cells. The white blood cells there's so many types. Okay. Neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, lymphocytes, and so on, and also platelets, all the blood components. Okay, and each of these blood cells function differently. For example, the red blood cell, what is the job of red blood cell? Transport, yes, transport oxygen and also the CO2. Okay, and what about the white blood cells? Yes, for immune function and also your bo bodily defense. Okay? But when they were married stem cells, like this, anything can happen. They need to acquire the identity first. So like your leaf, um, the, the thing that you see right next to it, like the horn, that actually we call as the leaf primordia. Leaf primordia means that the leaf cells, this married stem, just differentiated, okay, newly differentiated cell. It has got the identity now. So, we call it leaf primordia. Yeah. So, the positioning of this leaf primordia will come out on any axis depending on the plant species. Sometimes it coming out from this axis, from this side. Sometimes it comes from both sides like this. And this will determine the leaf arrangement of the plant. Okay, some plant, which you will learn later about the leaf arrangement, we call it phy phylotaxy. Sometimes the leaf is alternate on a branch like this. Sometimes the leaf is um, opposite like this. One side here, one side here. Sometimes the leaf is alternate. So it form the spiral form. Sometimes the leaf can form a whorl, pusa, like this. Whorl, pusa. And pay attention to something else here. Two types of buds that you can get. The apical meristem, this is the top one. This here. And if you go slightly lower, you, you see this a lot uh, with the hibiscus plant. The axillary buds. Okay? 
it's usually very very small so you have your branching here and then you have this thing so this is the auxiliary button and it's dormant meaning that it's sleeping because apical meristem suppresses its development we call it apical dominance This concept is used by arborists, people dealing with uh, tree landscape, and also horticulturists to get bushier tree. You know, when you cut the tea, tree, soon it's going to become bushier and bushier. Okay, so the event of the tree and also the shrubs become bushier because this axillary bud gets activated because the top apical meristem has been removed. The moment apical meristem has been removed, apical dominance is lifted. Nobody is restricting this from growing. And when this is growing, that's why you get the bush here. Pokok jadi rendang. Okay, so if you're an arborist, this is something that you practice um, regularly. Okay, yeah. And Differentiate from your lesson last week. This is meristem as well, apical meristem as well, but this is for shoot, uh, sorry, for root. So it's the other way around, okay? So this is the other end of the plant, all right? I hope you still remember about all the zones, okay? Is this the youngest part of the root? This part here, is, it, is this the youngest? If you say this is the youngest, you don't remember the lesson. Why this is not the youngest? So, which part is the youngest? This is the youngest, okay? This is where the meristem is located. This is the root cap. Root cap is already here for, for quite some time, producing a special substance to lubricate the root as it moves through the coarse soil. What is that substance? Start with M. This can be your, your, your exam question. Mucilage. Mucilage. Or oh, sometimes people call it mucin. Something like that. Okay. <clears throat> right. So it's pretty much um, self that are actively dividing the meristem tissue, all right? So it can have the apical and also the lateral. Lateral meristem, pretty much the same like the axillary, uh, but it's on the side. Lateral means side, okay? Apical means at the apex, at the summit, the top. All right, so let's have a look. Okay, and when you cut your stem, um, this is something that you're going to learn um, in the final half of your semester during your anatomy lesson, okay? So when you cut your stem, this is usually what you're going to get, okay? So you're going to get your cortex. Cortex is ground tissue, tissue asas, cortex. Cortex, okay, ground tissue. It's just there to give the structure of it, okay? Like your flesh, you got a flesh, right? Yeah, so it's like the, the um, that. And then you have your pith. Pith is actually the core of it. Um, uh, what's the layer of it? Pith is empulor. It's the, 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 the core, the middle part of it, okay? Right, and then you have your vascular bundles. Look at the words, it says bundles, meaning that there are other things inside of it. What are the things? Yes, xylem and phloem, right? So this is the piping system of your stem. So many piping system, why? Why that's important? Yeah, you need to transport all the um, 
water and nutrients from one place to another, right? Okay. And there is wood. Wood is actually a stem, used to be a stem, but it has undergone secondary thickening and also lignification. All right, over time, you're going to get your wood. We don't go deeper into the wood because you are not forestry students, but uh, the lessons of the wood itself can take the whole semester just learning about wood. Okay, there's so much to learn, right? Um, some woods are universal, pretty much can be used anywhere. Some woods are more specific, some wood meant for, you know, short term use and so on, right? So you have your pith as well, but this is all has been hardened because of the lignification, all right? And then you've got your bark and also the inner bark. And look at the ring. So those ring, we call it annual rings. So for every time the wood uh, grow, usually annually, a layer of the diameter is added to it. That's why you, you, you hear that people say, oh, you can count the age of the wood based on how many rings it has. Actually, sometimes the, this ring doesn't really mean um, one year. It, it can mean less or more than that, depending on the uh, weather of the plants. Okay. What, what we can do to be more accurate is people take sample using a borer, you know, like an auger. Do you know auger? Auger. Auger, borer. You, you take a sample of this. It's like a cylinder. You kind of twist it and then take out some sample. And then we, we can send this sample to the lab to do... Um, radio radio carbon dating not dating go 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 with with the love of your life not that kind of dating carbon can have isotopes okay some carbons when it's present in certain concentration that is actually related to its half life in the past. So when you see there are carbon 12, carbon 13, carbon 14. So over the time, scientists can predict how long does it take to, 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 to have the um, certain amount of carbon um, in the living tissue or the dead tissue. Okay, so radiocarbon dating, they look at the composition of carbon and then they put it into formula that's why you say, oh, this tree, 1,000 years ago. This tree, 100 years ago. Okay? Because trees that is relatively new, they don't really have, uh, they, 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 they still have lots of this. Over the time, this is going to deplete. Okay? It's got half-life. Separuh nyawa? Nyawa separuh? Maybe there is a word for it, but I do not know. Did you learn chemistry? Okay. Annual ring, then uh, this is the one that I told you about, annual ring. You got the xyla, you got your flower. So this also meristematic, okay? Just now you saw that the meristem can happen at the apical, the end, at the bud, and also at the, the root level, just before the root cap. Inside the stem also, you have a meristematic cell. So these xylems and all of this ring originated from a structure called pericycle. Maybe pericycle or cambium. So more and more cells going to come up from, from, from this. Yeah. We can get pretty big. Remember I told you about the plants that thousand years old? was around already when the pharaoh was building the pyramid. Yeah. This tree here, actually, um, I, I visited this before. This was this is in, in London, actually, this place here. Sequoia is not really in London, but they brought the sample to London. So there is a museum in London. They call it um, Natural History Museum. Yeah. So it, that museum is so big. It's like, like a Summer Valley. It's old. It's old. So they, they have this and then 
they kind of put the timeline of human history on top of this um, wood ring to show that what has this tree witnessed over the history of human, right? So many people can, need to, you know, join hands to encircle uh, the girl of it. Okay, uh, different kind of box. And this is actually not very common in Malaysia, okay? But um, I can tell you, usually what plant is this? This is actually birch tree, you know, like JWW birch. Birch tree, this is oak tree. This is cherry tree. This is, um, I forgot the name actually. Um, it, uh, eucalyptus. The examples of it. Okay, and then lenticel, remember? Did you, have you seen lenticel? With your samples? Yeah, the mulberry, true, yeah. So hopefully you get it right, okay? So lenticels, I hope you put it, yeah. It's actually pause, pause uh, to facilitate gas exchange of the stem co components with, with the surrounding air, okay? Even though the stem and the, bark, the trunk pretty much waterproof, air still can move in between this environment, okay? So thank you to this um, lenticel. Type of branching. So you got you have learned this as well, remember? With what, with what plants you learn this? Orchids, yeah? The monopodial and also the sympodial orchids, okay? Yeah, this is oak. Corpus florifolia. Oil palm, Elaeus, Guinensis. What's the family of oil palm? You should know this. This is the golden crop for our country. What's the family of oil palm? What family? <coughs> I should have already told you. Something to do with um, Pinang. It starts with A. The oldness starts with P. What? Eric AC. Palme. Yeah. New name? Old name. But these are still the palm family. So, coconut, betel nut, uh, apa tu? Anau, you know, gula anau? Yeah. Uh, palas, all belong to this family. Um, sago, you know sago? Yeah. yeah. And then we have oak. We don't have oak in Malaysia. Yeah, but I think if you watch lots of movies, you should know this, this tree. And it has got the sympodial growth, okay? Monopodial, just one. Sympodial, it kind of join together. You can do the, all this branching thing. All right, okay. And then they've got the vine, plow, stem, not something, but climbing or trailing on some support. So some plant, what, what plant is this? What plant is this? So it should be grapes. What's the Latin name for grapes? It start with B. This class is all about you know all the Latin uh, possible on the planet. Vitis. It depends on the, on, on the species. Sometimes it's Vitis vinifera. Okay. So um, the stem for for this. It actually has been um, kind of modified. More, it's a specialized stem. Okay, it's climbing and trailing on some support. However, if you just put it on the ground, it's not going to grow further. Okay, uh, this is not watermelon. Okay, because um, vitis, the grape is perennial. The stem can becomes woody over time. 
you can have grape tree age 20 years old. Can you have watermelon plant 20 years old? No, right? Because it's not perennial. But um, ango, grapes, it's perennial. It can, it can reach um, 20, 30 years old very, very easily. Okay. Can we grow grapes in Malaysia? Mm, ever, ever, ever um, taste Malaysia grapes? How, how does it taste? Why, why, why is it sour? Because of the weather. What's wrong with the weather? Too hot. Too um, hot. Grapes, where, where was it originally? What, what kind of climate are we talking about here? Can you get, can you get grapes in Japan? Yes. All right. Can you get grapes in uh, America? Yes. Okay. So maybe it's four season, temperate country? Can you get grapes in Italy? Can you get grapes in Athens, Greece? Greece. You know Greece? Greece, Greece, Greece. Bukan Greek, itu perak. Greek itu. Greece, Athens, Athens. Botany will bring you to the whole world. You need to know all these things uh, geographically. So actually, grape is... I think they, they said it's originate from Mediterranean region. Okay, Mediterranean region. Um, so all these Mediterranean countries like Greece, Italy, yeah, um, Bulgaria, part of Turkey, and, and so on. All right. So this place, they have a long photo period, especially during summer. 16 hours of daylight to 18 hours of daylight so naturally the grapes grow there they have more time to make sugar fruit and so on so naturally they are sweeter our country how long is your uh, daylight it's actually not even 12 hours yeah yeah so you have less hours of daylight plus maybe something to do with, uh, with the soil as well okay um, grapes of the highest quality people don't sell it to the supermarket people turn it into product what is it gem wine, gem, wine. yeah champagne it's a name of a place in in uh France actually, Champagne. So this um, this area, um, the soil is rich in calcium, magnesium, and so on. Okay, Cal calcareous calcareous soil. So the soil actually um, influences the taste of the grapes. In addition to all this long day of summer, all right. So. Don't blame um, the farmers in Malaysia if the grapes here don't taste so great. Maybe if the grapes were to be grown in the inside, you know, plant factory, maybe it's sweeter, right? Yeah. All right. So, uh, but, okay, I think we have covered this. So, the terminal bud, this is the apex and you've got your lateral bud. You see, the mom, if you cut this, you know, you do your pruning, the trimming of your plants, these two will start to grow. That's why you have branching, okay? Bushier plant, all right? And then you've got bud scales. Um, so these are the covers for the buds. Uh, usually the buds, because they have meristem in it, the plants need to cover this meristem from aggravation of surrounding. So the bud scales um, provide this function, okay? It can be single uh, scale, uh, pretty much like this, or it can be um, make it just one shift. Satu sarung macam ni. All right. Um, we have this in Malaysia, but not so much. This is more in the countries that has to experience severe winter. Okay, it's very cold. 
so the 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 plants need covering for the buds because inside the bud is meristem it's dormant but it's still living okay the good example for this is um maybe you sakura you know sakura yeah yeah anybody do not know sakura do we have sakura in Malaysia? Yes. Is that correct? No. <laughs> let's 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 put it a bit. At least I, I can correct something. Um that's that's two words, two terminologies here. We got sakura and also hanami. Hanami. In Malaysia, we don't have sakura, but we have hanami. Hanami is the flower viewing. Sakura, it means um, cherry blossom. Sakura is actually a cherry tree, okay, which belongs to the same family as the apple. Cousin. Apple is the cousin for sakura, okay. So when you see all the trees that people call sakura sakura along the, the roads that's actually tebubuya um tebubuya yeah so this tree um <laughs> will flower at specific time during the year and you have these vibrant colors full of blooms of the flower so you are actually viewing it uh you are having hanami hanami so do you want Hanami or do you want Sakura? Sakura, <laughs> Sakura, Sakura um, um, is, is actually a, a bit weird, this plant, because um, it has undergone winter, so the tree pretty much bald. No leaf, no flower, nothing. Just this thing. Just this. But the moment spring arrives, sometime end of March, meaning that the, the winter has stopped, the snow has stopped, it will start to bloom right away. Not producing leaf, not producing anything, straight to flower. Okay, so this condition, there is a phenomenon. It's called, let me see, whether I remember it or not, for it's been a while. Um, his third and thus. Um, maybe you can look up what does it mean, but it's pretty much sakura. So is this stays dormant? It just bloom first and pollination takes place. Then only will the leaf come. Okay. Usually we have leaf first, right? Yeah. Then only you have the flower. No, in the case of sakura, it's hesteranthus. So the flower will come first, get all the pollination. And then the leaf will come later and also the fruit. What is the fruit of sakura? Cherry. Cherry. Yeah. Pernah makan cherry? Yeah. How does it taste? Sweet. Sweet? No, this is not cherry happy birthday cake. That doesn't count. This is actual cherry. <laughs> sour, yeah. Um, so, um, actually, there is a word for cherry. We don't call it sour. We call it tart. Tart, that's the word, tart. Tart. Sour, sour is like, you know, your young um, a mango. That's sour. <coughs> tart. Tart, okay? All right, and then you got the scar. I think we have we've seen this before as well. The butt scar, remember your um, papaya. Yeah, so it's pretty much, this is the thing, okay? So you can see all the vascular bundle scars along 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 the stem, okay? Yeah, and okay, I've already covered this as, as well. The concept of nodes and internodes is this clear already? Okay, so um, you know about this, right? We can we can um skip this. Nodes and internodes. What are they in Malay? Nodes. What do you call it? What do you call this? Buku dan ruas. All right. Okay, stem modification. All right. Okay, here's the thing. Um, if you look at your notes, 
So um, that's the introduction about the stem, okay? Basically for the morphology. The rest of the slides, I think they're going to deal with um, modification of the stem. However, these notes, I think it's not very optimum. It's kind of didn't give, remember your root uh, slide? That has been, the slides have been modified by me. I kind of put the mind map to it so that you know, oh, for the root modification, there are two paths tap root modification, advantageous root modification, and then you have the smaller components of it. All right, so, but I found you this, and this is very useful. So, this is the under, uh, stem modifi uh, modification, <laughs> depending on the location of the stem. Is it underground, aerial, or sub-aerial? Remember you have been taught this concept, I think two weeks ago? Yeah, all right. So, um, I think, why not we turn this into your SEL? Because this is pretty much, you make the slides based on this. Number one, you have to make the, the map first. So, have the map, something like stem, modification, and then we put three, there are three. What? Um, air, aerial, sub aerial the one underground and what are they uh, yeah and so on um be because i want to reduce the number of class that you need to replace and apparently we can uh, do sel to do that because more than class replace all 100 percent okay all right so here we have Three, underground, sub-area, and aerial. And for next week, we have lesson as well for the leaf. Okay, so for this week, why not three groups take this assignment? Okay, what is your assignment? So, some, someone can prepare this uh, chart so that all groups can use it. And then you tell, you highlight your group is dealing with which one? And then for each of these, turn it into one slide. For example, that rhizome. Tell it what rhizome is and what are the example of the plant. Put some pictures. Pretty much like all the uh, slides that I, I've shown you uh, before. Okay? So, <clears throat> do that for one, for one slide. For example, you have your modification, the name of the, of the modification. What is it? Okay, rhizome. Rhizome. And describe it. What is it? And then one image to, to do all the labeling. This is what, this is what, this is what. And then the name of the plant. And give example. Example. What else on the rhizome? The one that you dealt with? Ginger, right? Yes. What else beside that? Is that? Turmeric. Is that really stem? Are you sure? It says, it says turmeric here. Mm, I think turmeric is more into root, actually. Mm. Yeah. There are many rhizomes. What about um, your lalang? Imperata cylindrica. Okay. This is just a guide for you. Okay. Be certain, double check, and find out. Have um, about three or four examples. Okay. So for each picture, find a, a nice picture for it. Uh, just two names the Latin name for it, and also the common name for it. Okay, so that people know. All right? Yeah. All right. Which group wants this? How do we decide? <coughs> um, can, can, can we turn on a bit of light at the back so that it's a bit brighter? Uh, light switch? Where is it? Is it a light switch? That looks like it has been sealed. Um, is it light switch? Turn on a bit. 
So we have group lavender or Riza, sweet bread, sweet petals. Ini apa ni? Pang, pekap pang. Yurosa. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, three groups can take um, the assignment today. Another two groups take assignment for from the lecture next week. Is that okay? Is that okay? All right. Okay. Who wants to volunteer? <laughs> okay. Um, wait, wait, wait. Okay, you can decide by your friend. Um, if you are happy, just write your group name and which assignment you want. Go here. Right here. Okay. Don't worry if you don't get this week. You can still get next week. Oh, got the marker. You know, I think if you do this kind of assignment for three times, it, it can be equivalent to two classes. So, it's only one time. There's more. Underground. Underground what? Underground stamp. Tell me stamp. Tell me Sweet petal. All right, Zah. The other group? Betul ke? It's just sub-area of the Oh, Raiza, are you sure that's how you spell sub aerial? Uh, group Banga? Yeah, Volga. Oh, eh, oh, I shot name for your group. Okay. All right. Okay, um, nanti ambil gambar ni, post dalam uh, Skype so that we, we are aware of this. All right, what about the other two group, Eurosa and uh, what is the one? Lavender. All right, so these two group, um, next week, okay? All right, okay. So I think uh, there's stem, leaf, flower. Three more. Okay, so I think it's pretty much that way. I'll give the introduction and everything, and then you'll take up the assignment to find out. It's very easy. It's actually very good for you. You can strengthen your memory. You just find beautiful images and then start labeling. Okay, I think it's good because you don't get the chance to go and about walk in the botanical gardens. So turn Google image into your botanical gardens. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. Um. Is there any question about your assignment up to this point? Or is it clear? Or you want to ask, is it to uh, ginger and turmeric? Is it is it rhizome or not? You know, I, I saw I saw some of the notes actually. They kind of a bit outdated. It's science. Science very actively changing. Like the radish that you learned last week, <laughs> actually. It's under which modification? Adventitious or taproot? Radish. It's, it's root. It's under which root modification? Adventitious or taproot for the radish? Tak lah. Taproot, right? Actually, if you want to go very strict about it, radish and turnip is not really the taproot that gets swollen. It's something else, actually. You would know this. Remember I told you there is a bedtime story book for you? There is a story in there. So this is your turnip, something like that. And that's, that's. Mm. 
This is your shoot part. This is actually the tap root, which still not swollen. So what's right in the middle here? This is hypocotyl. So when the when the when the seeds germinate, when you have your hypocotyl here, hypocotyl means the stem under hypocotyl. Hypo means under under hypocotyl, meaning that the hypocotyl is up, this is down. Okay. So it is this part actually that gets swollen, which is the baby stem. The baby stem. All right. But I think if you go to the whole internet, nobody is going to mention about this so much. But the truth is that so even with botany, sometimes things kind of look in the gray area. Okay. However, they cannot call this stem because hypocotyl is not really a stem. It's only present during the baby time. Yeah. But since it's still part of the root, so people call it it's a root modification. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is this story is actually in the bedtime story book. Do you know? Have you opened the book? I, I put the book so that you can read one chapter a week. It's a very, 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 very short, short story. It's a very, very leisure, leisure book. Okay. Because um, you don't get to learn plant science so much because you already find a semester. Or do you have more? Three more years to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> okay. All right. Um, I think that's pretty much about it. Um, do you want me to continue teaching or do you want to have party with your friends? Discussion. You have assignment to do, right? Or is it, or do you want to continue? Or do you want to find uh, information by yourself? I can leave it to you. I'll, 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 we'll finish whatever slides. Ah, uh, thanks. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Stem verification. Runners and stall on. Errors are everywhere underground. Where is it? Above ground. It's a real. Okay. It's a real. Runners, you dealt with this plant before. What plant was it? As a nepos compressor. So, rumput? Kerbau. Cows grass. Okay. And you have the stolon. What is the difference between a runner and stolon? A run, a run, a stolon is actually elongated into nodes. Okay? And it's actually go above the ground. You see? A stolon for strawberry, it's not even touching the ground. At least for the runner, half of it touch the soil under, half of it touching the air above. Look at it. Remember your your uh, cow's grass? It's on the ground, right? Yeah. It's on the ground. So half above, half down. Runner. If it's completely out, like strawberry here, stall on. And still, both of them stem modification. Right? And then we have spider plant. Have, have you seen this plant before? Yes. Yeah. Chlorophytum. Right? So this is, is it? Touching or not? The soil. So, it's a stall on. Yeah. Why, 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 uh, Dr. Fidos put it, runner or stall on? Because if it's, the pot is not hanging, the pot, uh, the plant is on the ground, the, the stall on now is actually behaving like runner. It just goes straight next to, to the next plant. Yeah. But because the nature of the pot is hanging, even for the strawberry sometimes, yeah, but if you grow, if you were to grow Exonopus compressors in this pot, hanging pot, it still cannot produce this stolon. It'll just play around in the pot. It's not going to come out of the pot. Right. Do, do you think the grass can grow out of the pot? No. no. So because naturally Exonopus compressors do not have stolon. Okay. So stolon, if that is not required for it to go far away, it can turn itself into a runner. Right? Yeah, something like this. This is Bermuda grass. Uh, many grasses 
are behaving this way. All right? Yeah. So please, please don't. I, I'm explaining this so that you don't get confused uh, easily. Because sometimes you see one book calling this, one book calling that. You are going to be safe if you understand why is it being called that way. Then regardless of the books that you're referring, uh, actually, um, there's a twilight zone. Okay. Rhizomes. Okay. Growing horizontal. You have these scale-like leaves. Look at your um, ginger. It's got many scales, right? The skins. Okay. We got advantageous root, thick, fleshy food storage organs. Yeah. So you got your ginger here. It grows horizontally. Okay. So that is one criteria of rhizome. Rhizome, horizontal. Just remember that. And then you have bulbs, which is your onion. It's actually stem but very small stem the basal plate <laughs> remember I, I drew it on, on the board so there's a label of basal plate that is actually stem almost not non-existent because the rest of it is the fleshy part that's that's actually not stem that's actually leaf so the stem is like super super small at the base the basal plate so the basal plate um get um it just stay there and then surrounding it, the fleshy leaf will um, wrap it up. Okay, so that's how you get the bulbs. Okay, fleshy leaves become the food storage and very small step. Right. What what plants besides um, allium, uh, onion, garlic that have bulbs? <laughs> can, can you give other example? What, what, what plants? <laughs> Onions, we've covered it already. Onion and garlic. Tulip. Amaryllis. Um, I saw Amaryllis uh, during Maha time the other day. Um, do you know Amaryllis? I think you know the flower. Uh, people do not know the name is Amaryllis. Uh, um, do not know what was it in Malay. Kind of like Lily, kind of like Lily. When when I was when I was when I was a student, um, I like to buy uh, tulips bulbs, and then put it on my windowsill, and then just just look at it to grow. Uh, because you can buy the bulbs like, um, like you like you buy onion, yeah. You don't buy the bulbs to make curry. <laughs> you buy the bulbs uh, because you want to grow yeah in your room. Okay, so over time, um, you can see uh, it's it's very very beautiful, All right? So scale like leaf. So this is still leaf, okay, but it's fleshy. Okay. And then when it grows bigger, you will have this long above crown leaf. Alright. Sometimes you get this uh, bubble or bublet. Uh, this is the small part of it. Uh, usually happens for garlic. You have your bulbs and then something smaller coming out of it, this offset. So this is synonymous, okay? But still it has the base of plate. This is the stem. Okay, this section here, crossing, how do you call it? This front crossing, this has been cut, right? What do you call it? Front cut, what do you call it? You learned this before? Yes. Yeah, what is it called? This, you cut it. How many are there? How many cross section planes are there? Three. What are they? Transverse. Longitudinal. Tangential. So, this is which one? Longitudinal. Okay, it's the length of it. Long. The length of it. How about this one? The second one? Transverse. Because it's looking up. All right. All right. Um, tangential. Is it possible? Why not? If you want to do tangential, you just decide which circle you want to cut. Maybe you cut, cut from here. 
So, so, so it becomes something like this. Yeah. So that can be your tangential. Yeah. It's it's like a, a sliver of your um, entire circle. Okay. It's not half of it. Just somewhere at the end here. So that can be your um, uh, tangential. All right. It's tangent because it's referring to the circle. And then you make a line touching the base of the circle. Okay. Did you learn tangent in your mathematics? Yeah. Yes. Right. Chromes. Did you, did you draw chrome? Chrome um, <laughs> is a stem, but it doesn't grow horizontally. It's growing vertically. It's, it's actually pulling the plant inside. Inside the soil. So rhizome, rhizome, horizontal. Com, vertical. Bob, this is actually static. Okay, it's all about how, how, how is it moving, the plant. Okay, so good example for comp is, um, yeah, yam, yeah, yeah, banana, banana, yam. What is yam? Yeah, um, in, in, in some countries, they don't, they don't know what yam is. Is that alternative word for that? Taro, bukan ultraman taro. <laughs> you know taro? What's the difference taro and yam? What's the difference? Um, taro can be purple. But yam can be Yam, yam. Usually it's white, right? Yeah. Purple taro. That, that can be purple taro. Yeah. Calm, short, solid, vertical, underground. See, see, vertical, vertical. It never goes sideways. If it's sideways, it's what? Rhizome. Have you eaten yam before? No. no? Is it is it healthy? It is. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's healthy actually. Okay. And then crocus. Oh, why why he put this thing? This 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 plant is actually um, is the it gives a product actually spice spice herbs and uh, herb and spice product. Okay, five minutes. All right. 
Okay, let's continue. <coughs> oh, I want to give you uh, a riddle, actually. Take a key. What is one herb that is more expensive than gold? Yes, saffron. And this is the plant. However, the saffron is not present here. The saffron is actually stigma coming out from it. About three stigma. So imagine, one flower can only produce three threads of stigma. And you have to painstakingly pick out of it. Right? So saffron, uh, it's, it's even more expensive than gold. Like literally. Yeah, weight by weight. I'm talking about the weight. Yeah. Do you know saffron? I think I think in Malay it, um, it some 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 shop it labels coma 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 k k o m a k o m a all right um what is it used for it's it's more into coloring it's it's, it's more into coloring but if you go to some pharmaceutical industry, they actually extract this because it is um, the compound saffronin, I think, one of it. Uh, it's good to, uh, to elevate stress symptoms, you know, mental disorder. So when you're eating this extract, you can, it can actually calm you down, yeah, to relax. Yeah, you know some people. No, it's it's not saying that you are crazy, mental. No, no. You know sometimes sometimes things can get overwhelming, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is the alternative medicine for for it. Okay, crocus. Iri 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 There is there is there is a flower belong to this 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 flower is named after this family or oh, this family named after this flower. Oh, bunga. Bunga iris. You, do you have iris? Yeah. Where? In your eyes. Yeah, that's a flower. Iris flower as well. Okay, calm. How long it is taught stem? Okay, you already know this, right? I, I've told you so many times. Okay, you have learned botany. Now you should know there is no stem for grass. What is it? Calm. Okay. So this one here. Yeah. It's hollow. I have opened in front of you. That's actually hollow in there. It's not solid. The stem should be solid. And bamboo is also the fam the grass family. In fact, bamboo is the fastest growing organism on the planet. Oh, yeah. When it's growing vegetatively, when it's active, it can grow about 20 inches in one day. You can literally see it growing in front of you. When it's growing okay so it's very very fast uh, uh bamboo right can rice or oh, rice cannot grow that fast but rice um uh it can grow rice is semi-aquatic plant okay it can grow uh with with water in it however please correct your understanding when it comes to rice rice do not require flooding water to grow no it's just like a regular exonopus compressors. However, since it is semi-aquatic, because the inside of it is uh, hollow, there's a structure. We call it lacuna. Lacuna is the hollow structure inside the rice leaf. So this provides air reservoir for the rice. That's why rice can grow submerged in water. And this is actually a plus point for rice because many wheats cannot tolerate submerging water condition. So the flooding that you see that is always associated with rice cultivation, it's simply to eradicate wheats problem. Now it's, it's not helping with the rice production. Okay. Right, so please correct that understanding. I'm telling this a bit more because rice is, is my crop. Guess, guess what? 
each 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 um um each academician in um university they have their own thing okay we have the um plastic professor you know we have plastic professor yeah we ha we have biopolymer professor we 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 have um you know the Chinese playing that thing, Eru, uh, I think the name. Ding, 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 ding. Huh. We have that professor as well. Eru ke benda tu? Kan something else. Um, I'm thinking of the, the, the Malay name for that. Kecapi. Um, Google lah, tengok. <laughs> so we have professor for that. Um, so, um, so each people that when they have learned for for quite some time they become uh, specializing in that all right okay i i don't eat rice but uh, I, I do specialize in rice okay tuber mm. did you deal with tuber what plant is it potato look at this so it shows you that if if this was stem you're not going to get lots of this mess because this is root some roots are ready to swell up some roots are not ready so that's why you, you still get this all this fibrous thing a lot yeah and with uh, potato please do not get confused with sweet potato actually i just remember when when i was telling about the difference between sweet potato and potato the other day i think two weeks ago i kind of give wrong wrong family name let me correct now uh, no no kind of betul but not quite there so you have sweet potato and you have potato. What's the the family of potato? <coughs> Solana say. I think I said the the family for sweet potato is ipo ipomia say. Mana the family ipomia say? Ipomia is the genus. Ipomia. Actually, the family for sweet potato is convulvula say. The morning glory, the morning glory family. Yeah, that's why in some cooking book you will see people call kangkong in English water convulvulus. Water convulvulus, referring to this family convulvulus. Yeah. Ipomia is the genus, Convolvulaceae is the family, Solanaceae is the family for potato. Even though the name contains potato, different family. Which one is healthier? Sweet potato. Why? Ah, why? Tak sampai dua minggu. Ah, the pigment. Apa, apa pigment? Anthocyanin, kan? Carotin. Yeah. All right, and then we got tendril. Okay, this is the slender twinning organ. You know, uh, bunga telang, bunga di biru tu, buat nasi kerabu. Ah, uh, yeah, got that thing. This tendril thing. Lots of this. This springy stem. Okay, it's to grasp and support. It's it's not really. Um, usually, stem branching can come out from it, right? No, 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 there's no branching coming out of it. This is this is like macam. Oh, I'm about to fall. So they macam baling that long rope you know you know in the movie the ninja and the bad guy they have the rope and then the paling apa benda benda tu with the hook yeah there, there is a name for that i forgot all right thorn is actually a modified stem so there is this 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 should be three okay thorn uh spine <coughs> trickle thorn is modified stem 
in Malay, all this duri. You learn both any now. Uh, so there's there is a different. Spine is modified leaf. Prickle is modi uh, ni, uh, epidermal outgrowth. Outgrowth. Yeah, I think I got something in my phone. So maybe I can. I should have something. Sorry, like I have not taught botany for, for almost four years. Um, four years ago, what were you doing? <laughs> <laughs> where, where were you? Where were you four years ago? 20, 20, 2017? Uh, early. School. School? <laughs> yeah, let me see. Do I still have that? Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. I'll, I'll, send, I'll send to the group. Um, forward. Okay, so that should be helpful for you. Special left list. So spines, thorns, prickle. Yeah. Yep. So usually for thorn, uh, you can you can look see that it's a bit woody, because it's actually stem. So if the if the main branch or main trunk is actually woody the thorn going to be woody as well. So, among these three, which one is the most painful? Oh. Which one? Which, which one is more, the most painful one? Um, to answer that, that actually depends on individual. Some, some, some people, they, they are a bit allergic to some plants, even though a small prickle can actually set off reaction, inflammation reaction. Yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I, I never experienced this before my uh, in, in, in Malaysia, but when I was first got in, um, exposed to temperate plants, there, there are many nasty plants in four seasons uh, regions. There are many, many nasty plants. And this plant, sometimes they only appear in summer. So I think I was doing weeding. You know, you do. You have to do your practical, right? Yeah, I did my practical as well, but I did my practical in England. So um, long time ago. Um, Facebook just launched. <laughs> um, so uh, I was doing the weeding. The instructor had told us to wear all the gloves. But, you know, you came from tropical area. These gloves kind of like, ah, please lah. <laughs> so I'll just do the weeding and then I start pulling and then suddenly my hand felt like, do you remember your BCG? Mm. How, how, how did it feel? <laughs> yeah, imagine 20 BCG come at once. <laughs> So, so hurtful. But when you look at your, your hands, nothing. It's nothing. Like, literally nothing. No physical damage, whatever, but the pain is still there. Yes. Just touch something. So, this nasty plant is called nettle. Nettles. Nettle. Um, if you ever get to go to four season countries, please be aware of this plant. If you if you if you if you touch that even a bit, yeah, you're going to cry. You're going to cry. It's it's everywhere. It's everywhere. But the good thing is about nature, right next to nettle, there is a cure for it. It's called dockwood leaf. Plantain. Plantago major. The leaf look like this. Nettle look like this. Uh, kind of like uh hibiscus. So this this um this leaf the dogwood here the plantago is the cure for it crush it and then put it wherever you got stung by nettles Ooh. yeah then I learned later so actually I knew that already but when it's just too painful you forgot everything if something happened to you use your saliva to neutralize it if sal saliva doesn't work your pee. Your, your, your body got um, uh, anti-inflammatory substance as well, okay? 
All right. So um, your, your saliva got lots of enzyme, okay? This enzyme can neutralize many things. Just, just use it. I know it's, it's gross, but it works. All right, phyllo. Okay. So this is the step with the form and function of a leaf. Um, this, we have this tree, got UPM. Uh, how, how do I describe it? Unit agrotech. <laughs> ladang kongsi. Yeah, ladang kongsi. Um, there's a long road. If you keep on going that road, you will reach golf course. So by the side of the this small road, are the poko acacia, acacia. Many many trees. Acacia, acacia manjum. So this looks different when it's juvenile and when it's big. Okay. So when, when, when it's in different stage, it doesn't look like this. It looks something else, actually. Yes. It, cha it changes the shape. So this is the phyllode. When it gets bigger and more older, more mature, you're going to get this uh, form. Two forms in one leaf. Yeah. And this is what we call as phyllode. It's not different plants, okay? Still the same plant, all right? Yeah, this is the acacia. Poco acacia. All right, cladro and cladrophil. I think you dealt with this. What plant was it? Asparagus. Yeah, I've already explained this, so you should you should be very very good at it. Um, is this leaf? What is it? Which which is the leaf? Which one the leaf? This is the leaf or this is the leaf? Scale leaf. Down C here. Down C Have you eaten asparagus before? Or is it not common here? I think we got asparagus, right? Yep. Cledo, yeah. So this is a modified uh, stem. Uh, this is... Uh, I think this is more prominent in, yeah, this uh, 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 cactus, okay? So it is stem actually, but it looks to our eyes, it looks like leaf because it has been flattened, okay? Oh. It's flattened because it's so thin, you thought it was a leaf. No, it's, it's actually stem, stem that has been modified. If you if you pay attention, you can see something brown coming out of it. Guess what? That's the leaf, the scale leaf. All right, and then you have the cladophyll, which is um, this is also maybe you think oh this that's the leaf of cactus. Actually, stem. It kind of look like leaf, kind of this cladophyll here. Cactus pet. You can eat this, okay? Um, what's the name of this? Pr uh, prickly pear. Prickly pear. You you eat uh, dragon fruit anyway, right? Yeah. So it's the same thing, but it's from this um, uh, genus Opun Opuntia. So common name of this that fruit, cactus fruit, is called the prickly pear. Very nutritious, just like the dragon fruit. Okay, and then you have pseudobulb. This is more into orchids. Um, which orchid? You've got two types of orchid you dealt with. You've got the dendrobium and also the vanda. Which one can have the pseudobulb? Remember that you were drawing? Which? Dendrobium. So dendrobium, is it sympodial or monopodial? Sympodial. Good. Yeah, you got it, right? It's called pseudo. Pseudo means fake. Pseudo, it means fake. It looks like a bulb, but it's not bulb. Because if it's true bulb, true bulb contains the stem. 
and then the stem is enclosed with fleshy leaf. That, but that's not the case here. That's not the case here. This is just the base, the base of the stem gets swollen up. There is no leaf. The leaf is up there. There's no leaf down here. But for the onion, the leaf is from the ground, right? Then it kind of encasing the, the basal stem. All right. Um, sucker, tiller. Okay. Um, this is actually when the plant has undergone um, reproduction, reproductive cycle. Okay. Otherwise, you're not going to get so much um, um, sucker. Tiller, yes. Tiller for rice, it can happen quite early. But for banana, the sucker, um, you have to wait for a bit more. Um, yeah. Tiller. You know, when the rice farmers, they plant, transplanted the rice one by one, after three months, they're going to get 30. Because one rice gave rice to rice babies. Think of lemongrass. Have you ever planted lemongrass before, Sarai? When you planted lemongrass, one or ten? One. Wait three months, what happened? Yeah. So all the new um, lemongrass sticks that you get, that is tiller. That is. Because it's the same family. It's the same family. Okay. So tiller in Malay is called anak pokok. Anak pokok. Anak pokok padi. Oh, habis. <laughs> you see, uh, the, the, the notes, the notes is very too simple. Not my notes, okay? Disclaimer. Not my notes. If it was my notes. I don't, I don't want to change the notes too much because this, uh, your exam will be standardized. I give you the basic and then kind of help you to refine the note. That is fine. At least the basic has been covered. All right. I think you have, you, you have learned a lot uh, compared to other groups. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Because I've got lots of story to tell you. I don't think other group learned about uh, Sakura today. <laughs> Anybody have ever seen Sakura in real life? No. Not Hanami. No, it's not Hanami. Hanami, I can go now to the florist. <laughs> Sakura. Um, uh, sak uh, Sakura, Hanami of Sakura. I don't have to, wait to go to Japan. It can, it, 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 it's, it's going on in Australia, in, in many other countries. Yeah. I, I, I tell you one, one thing. Don't, don't, get, don't get fooled by one thing if you want to um, enjoy Sakura. When you go to Japan, this is only Japan. I don't see this really a problem in other countries. When you go to Japan, you thought you are, you know, you, you have your picnic blanket and having picnic with, with, with your um, with your friend and so on. You are having picnic to enjoy the hanami under the tree which is blooming. You thought that was a sakura. Actually, it's not sometimes. Sakura got timing for it. So sometimes you might be full thinking the blooming tree is sakura but it's actually ume. Ume is not cherry blossom. Ume is, oh, maksudnya nak habis nak buat. I, I need to uh, overhaul my markers. Some of it has been around for quite some, some years. Um, plum blossom. Plum blossom. Okay. How do you know? How do you know whether, whether, whether it's, it's plum? The flower kind of look the same. Okay. Take one petal for, uh, for, from each. You know petal? I know you, ha you have not learned flower yet, but you know, kelompak bunga. So, so for sakura, you have notch like this. I call it love notch. You have this. Ume, you don't have it. So this is sakura. The buktinya adalah, if you get uh, any Japanese coins, I think 100 yen. At the back, there is an imprint of sakura flower. It's got this design. Okay, because they know that's Sakura, not Ume. All right? All right? Okay? Go to Tokyo now? <laughs> 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 
I I went I went I went to Japan to do rice, but I got to see lah all all the stuff. Yeah, yeah. What what do you think about Japan? What do you think about it? You know, it's kind of surprising. All the Japanese that I know, they can't wait to come to Malaysia, and we can't wait to go to Japan. Many many Japanese I know actually come to stay in Malaysia. Yeah, they they just like Malaysia, and we don't like Malaysia. So it tells you that's something about the human nature. We just cannot be satisfied and grateful for some reason. All right, but it's a good place in Japan. You get you get to learn a lot a lot of things. All right, if you go now in Japan, there's a um, now it's the autumn. I I think it's it it has started. No no no, it starts next week. So the whole forest now from the green forest. Turn fiery, fiery forest. Okay, it's all red, orange, and yellow. So from far, you see like the forest is actually flaming. That 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 that's just the the, the chlorophyll have degraded. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. I think that's all for now. Um. Okay. Is there any question? Yeah. Oh, um, I'll, I'll tell you later. Just, just prepare first. Um, we'll have a look, maybe one week after you come back from your. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because week seven, you're still with me, right? Yeah. yeah. I think I'm quite busy with week seven, because uh, I got plans uh, during that time. I know week eight, you are already with Prof Uma. But uh, well, it's not like you cannot see me. Um, maybe we'll do our our replacement class um, on that week. Okay, all right, all right, okay, all right. Uh, okay, I think that's all for now. Any question? All okay. So you have been learning this for five weeks now. How do you feel? What about Tony? Can't wait for the semester to finish. You know, the guys usually don't enjoy this kind of story. How do you feel? I mean, like, do do you were, 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 did did you or did you not expect this kind of lesson? Yes, I don't. You. What, what did you expect to learn about botany? Uh, flower. 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 flower uh, next week. <laughs> what What did you expect? Uh, oh, is it is it too much? I'm following the bus. <laughs> Do you think it's interesting or not? Yes. So, what's the interesting part of it? Ah, this I want to know. What? Please. Oh, Latin name. Oh, she likes to memorize. I'll give more. <laughs> Um, well, at least I get to bring you throughout the world, right? We are visiting so many places already. I know we are in the class. <laughs> no, we just visited Japan today. Uh, I think you will have lawatan um, in, in the half semester I, 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 under Dr. Fidaus. Maybe they will make you join. I don't know. Depends on Prof. Uma. Yeah. Yeah. But ah boring if if my my class are uh, abroad I've, I've brought you somewhere else yeah. <laughs> but i'm not teaching you anyway anymore so uh, <laughs> okay 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 so um so I, I hope, I know maybe naturally you do not like the subject, but actually this has managed to open up your horizon a bit. Yes. You see, science is never boring after you have understood all the elements, components of it. Okay, this is science. This is science. All right. Okay, I know the Latin is boring. You have to memorize um, lots of dead language. Yeah, but things can be colorful as well. All right. Okay, so... All right, okay. Uh, I'll see you on Wednesday. All right? Yes. Okay. Um, and then you can uh, work around your friends uh, how you're going to do your day assignment. All right, that's all. I'll see you. Bye. Yeah.